another program of Centrally Speaking. The program that opens up the conversation around important matters of economics and finance, matters of national importance that have an impact on your life. I'm Elan. And in case you're wondering who Elan is, <laughs> Elan is sitting in for Sheena, who will be back next week. We're so happy to have you, Elan. Thank you. Uh, you'll I'm enjoy happy to be here. Great. You'll enjoy <laughs> our company. We're so happy you could join us again and welcome aboard to those of you who are joining for the very first time. Hey. Oh, my God. Uh, welcome. We invite you to stay with us. We have a great show lined up for you because in today's program, we will be talking to Mr. Richard Mullings, president of the Incorporated Master Builders Association of Jamaica. Richard will be talking about the construction industry in Jamaica. That should be an interesting conversation. But before we hear from Richard Mullings, we first want to hear from you. You who? You. No, not me. <laughs> you. <laughs> it's street. time for Street Check. Is it more affordable to build a house in Jamaica or buy one? I think it's more affordable to build a house if it's, for example, a container home than a typical concrete structure because, you know, land is still, you know, the most expensive part, but you can get a structure up quicker and cheaper if it's a container home. Even though a lot of persons may not like the container home because it carries certain connotations, but I think it's the quickest means to get what you want and it's not the end all be all because the land is going to appreciate in value but then you have somewhere to live in the meanwhile, while you figure things out and maybe get a concrete home in the future. Personally, I think it's more affordable to build. Everything depends on the, um, your financial situation. And it also depends if you are a married person. Because if you are a married person, you and your wife can combine and make an um, a intelligent decision in terms of whichever you need. If you are a single person, I think the single person is at somewhat of a, at a disadvantage depending upon their um, income. There are so many different factors, right? Because if you're going to build a house, let's say build, it depends where you're building it. If you're going to build it in Kingston, which is a high, everybody wants there, land is going to be expensive. I sh I'm sure building there is going to be more expensive. Opposed to then if you decided that you want to maybe have land out in the country, building country is cheaper. That's why a lot of people are going further out to build. I think given the current market, it's cheaper to build a house. Um, it's obviously, it depends on where you're building the house. So when you're looking at Kingston Metropolitan or you're looking at Mobe, it's probably going to be more expensive because the land cost is something that people, a lot of people don't factor in. The cost of land is high. Um, but it is lower than if you were going to just buy a house outright. For example, in Kingston, it is hard to find a family home for less than, I would say, about $30 million. Um, and that is out of the range, out of the scope of a lot of persons. Yep, our peeps on the streets with the interesting responses. <laughs> now come with us <laughs> as we attempt to demystify economic matters so that everyone can understand. Our guest today is Richard Mullings, president of the Incorporated Master Builders Association of Jamaica, otherwise called IMAJ, who will tell us about the impact of construction industry on Jamaica's economy. Richard, welcome to Centrally Speaking. Hi ladies, thank you for having me. It's good to have you, welcome. First of all, Richard, what is the role and function of the Incorporated Master Builders Association of Jamaica? Right. The IMAJ is an association of building, civil engineering, and specialist contractors and other associated firms. Okay. Um, we represent the industry and we promote the building trade in the island of Jamaica. The association aims to maintain the standard of building construction in the island of Jamaica. We promote and motivate our members to improve the level of service delivery. And we also lobby and advocate, lobby on behalf of the membership and advocate for improved relations with the government, with the public sector operations, operators. There's also a civil society component, meaning we work in what we believe is the best interest of nation building. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so, so you spoke about your membership um, and what it comprises, but who um, comprises your membership? 
a them developer there we have a big project them and you know, around about the place. All right. Yeah. So our members are contractors, people you see on the road building buildings. Mm -hmm. That's what people associate with construction, but also infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So people building roads, people laying pipelines. Mm. Um, we have associated what we call specialist firms, so people doing mechanical, electrical, so heating, mm -hmm. ventilation, mm -hmm. air conditioning. We have um, other associate firms, so these are not necessarily directly performing construction, mm -hmm. but they are associated with the industry, like merchants who supply building products, like mm -hmm. windows, hardware, and so on. So for your prospective members, I want to join the IMAG. Mm -hmm. What are the services that it provides to its membership? Okay, so at a high level, we advocate on behalf of our membership. So we represent mm -hmm. major issues to the government, public sector. Mm -hmm. um, we consider them and we discuss them, deliberate on them in council, and then we'll represent in the media or mm -hmm. we'll seek private conversations with government representatives and um, try to obtain the best outcomes for our membership and then for the country at large. We also negotiate. So there's a regular negotiation with the trade unions to develop um, what we call task rates. Or the, there's a labor management agreement that we negotiate the increases in labor costs and special terms for labor management mm. for the industry at large. Mm. Okay. Right? Um, and then from that negotiation, the, the master bill has directly develops its own uh, uh, what we call a blue book or it's a cost data manual where we indicate rates for specific work items in construction mm. and that's used okay. industry-wide as a basis for paying engaging yes. labor or okay. specialist trades also okay. right um further to that mm -hmm. we also do um a lot of training so we promote uh, what i want to say is to upskill the workforce mm -hmm. so we do workshops webinars seminars home to the public mm -hmm. but also to engage our members and other persons in the industry to help disseminate um, technology transfer, mm -hmm. you know, new ideas, and to deliberate major issues affecting the industry. Mm. So no doubt we would have heard about um, several developments that have, have been constructed and sold with um, structural challenges. Now, do you police your membership to ensure that the outputs are of the highest quality and then we can be sure say, Billion and dollar drop down for <laughs> So the, the association, um, we have an internal dis disciplinary mechanism, mm -hmm. but in terms of individual projects out on the street, there's really an existing management system or a, a, what do you want to call this, a project management hierarchy that where the, the owners of those projects have a responsibility to um, maintain quality. Mm -hmm. So the association itself doesn't directly police mm -hmm. projects on the street, but issues and complaints which are raised can be made to the association, and we do have an internal mechanism for reviewing those, those issues. Mm -hmm. But there's a, you, you raise an important point because mm -hmm. in the practice of construction, and especially as we're moving from low rise to high rise, mm -hmm. as a country, mm -hmm. we right. see a, an increase in development. Yeah. Yes the public really has to demand that um, the authorities, meaning building inspection from municipalities, mm -hmm. the meaning from professional engineers, mm -hmm. we have to demand that we get the right level of service to match mm -hmm. the, the changing our change in our landscape. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yeah. sticking to the right standards. Mm -hmm. The right too. standards and codes. So yeah. the master builders along with other members of the, the construction industry, such as the engineers, have worked many years on mm. improving the building code, working with the government, the public stakeholders to improve mm. the building code. Yes. Um, but I think it's important that the citizens demand that these things are followed, enacted, and that the public authority who really has the final say in how these things are policed, they we have to demand that, that it's followed through. I, I want to also touch on something I think the public wants to know. The construction industry seems to be booming. We look around, we see a lot of development going on. Is it really booming? Okay. So when it comes to construction, I've been, as young as I look, <laughs> um, I've been in construction more than two decades, you wouldn't believe it. They, people send, tend to say construction is um, cyclical. 
It has ups and downs. So when you say boom, the first thing that comes to my mind is when is the bust? Mm. So I don't like to say boom, but I will say that um, we are seeing an increased level of construction activity compared to previous mm. years. It is my hope that we could call this an approach to a, a new level, a higher level of sustainable construction. Yeah. I don't know if I can answer that it's a boom. But um, we see increases in, at the moment, an increased level of uh, public infrastructure work. So highways, major water mm -hmm. pipelines. Mm -hmm. We do, we are seeing additional works in the tourism sector, mm -hmm. hotels, mm -hmm. and certain new um, large capacity hotels. Mm -hmm. What is, I would say, particularly new to us is that a change in the landscape of private real estate development. Mm. So, as we said, high rise buildings, which mm -hmm. are new to us. Mm -hmm. right. and, um, Relatively. Yeah, relatively new. Well, at the scale that is happening right. in Jamaica, it's mm, yeah. new to us. We wouldn't have yeah. had this level, this much high-rise buildings right. in such a so short period of time. Right. Mm, yes. Be all being developed simultaneously, right. and then there's the, the usual government capital expenditure. So, mm -hmm. you know, new um, buildings for the tax office or mm -hmm. renovating the the Cornwall Regional Hospital, Hospital. for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So we are seeing at the moment. I think. Ex an accelerate an accelerated level of construction uh -huh. over the past couple of years especially in covid it started to pick up you didn't want to say boo mm -hmm. <laughs> you said accelerated <laughs> level of <laughs> so i'm asking now is that boon that um the the public is observing um it is said that it only happens in kingston can you correct this okay. and if it's not correct um, how about the rest of the country? <laughs> Kingston is traditional like the center of gravity. Right. The capital of the country. Right. Center of gravity for commercial activity. So mm -hmm. I, I guess superficially just looking around, it mm -hmm. seems like we're getting the bulk of it mm -hmm. in, in, in town here. A lot of high rises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think there's there's a significant push, especially on the North Coast, St. Anne, um, with the South Coast Highway opening up to the east mm -hmm. with the there's a extension on highway 2000 to the west mm -hmm. and we have seen i think it, as a matter of maybe proportion or ratio meaning mm -hmm. with the mass of the population in kingston right. you, you are getting a good proportion relative to population size okay. of okay. development in saint anne right. saint yes. catherine yes. um, Cla um yeah. clarinda Set yeah clarinda particularly drexel yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's Drexel. Drexel. Yeah. Yeah. And Drexel yeah. is very significant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And importantly, if you use St. Anne as, a, as mm. an example, mm. with the residential, you're seeing the commercial coming up mm. at, a, at a reasonable pace okay. to follow it's, it. Yeah. So I think that's a good sign that um, it's a good sign that the infrastructure, meaning the highways, mm -hmm. it seems that when that the development of those highways mm -hmm. has allowed um, commercial activity to start mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. come out and not be so Centralized. overly focused yes. in Kingston. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That seems, I think, on the surface, seems like a good thing. We have more questions for Richard Mullings, president of the Incorporated Master Builders Association of Jamaica, but it's time for a break. More on the impact of the construction industry on the economy after these messages. here on Centrally Speaking. Richard Mullings, president of the Incorporated Master Builders Association of Jamaica, has been giving us an update on Jamaica's construction industry. Now, Richard, we know there are constraints in every market. <laughs> Tell us some of the challenges of your industry mm. and what in your mind can be done to mitigate these challenges you've been experiencing. Yeah. So, hmm. Well, it, it's, it's easy to complain. That's <laughs> yeah, the first yeah. thing. Um, but I think overall, if I was to look at the high level topic, it would be that uh, Jamaica probably needs to, to go towards looking at a sustainable approach to construction. Yeah, yeah. And not just in terms of um, environmental sustainability, mm -hmm. even at, to make it commercially sustainable. Mm -hmm. So there, a large portion of, of construction or a large segment of the construction budget is the mm -hmm. government's public capital expenditure yeah. and over years it has not been as regular and as sustained especially in terms of how they treat with um, projects 
for the local industry. Uh -huh. And um, I think it's important that uh, the government, in terms of bureaucracy and how they manage the procurement process, mm. look towards a, a better scheduling, a better program delivery mm. that m maintains a maintains construction at a sustained level. If we're increasing mm. it, increase it in a sustained fashion, mm. which I think we are getting closer, better with that as they manage, you know, the economics, as the, the, the economic statistics of Jamaica mm. improve. Um, so we'll be talking about, if we're talking about road repair, if we're talking about new um, renovation of mm -hmm. public buildings, if we're talking about public housing, yes. we're talking about developing programs that operate and accelerate at a consistent level. So the pace, yeah. I think, needs to be sort of moderated and... Yeah. So, so th that is what sustainable is, meaning that there are a number of projects per year. Meaning yeah. It's, it's, it's foreseeable, it's forecastable. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, and it, it, yeah, it's managed schedule and it's not ad hoc. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that would be, mm -hmm. I think that's an important level. Okay. Okay. There are other issues we have. I think a major issue would be um, probably training, la labor. Let me put it as labor. Mm -hmm. So training and certification and improvement, mm -hmm. improving. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The labor supply oh, in Jamaica, and that, okay. but that's not just construction, but that's a significant issue. That you're that facing have. in the yeah. industry. Well, yeah. well, speaking of labor, mm -hmm. um, I'd love to ask a question on that. What? Well, you you raised the point, so you can just continue. Um, so the construction industry has said that there is a labor shortage, mm -hmm. or a shortage, mm -hmm. a, a shortage of meaningful labor in mm -hmm. the industry. So you're confirming this, but how have you fared um, with this shortage, mm -hmm. and what can what can be done? to alleviate, ameliorate, and fill the, the, the demand gap? It's very interesting. Jamaican labor is in demand, not just in Jamaica, international, mm -hmm. internationally. And the, the, the world is shrinking. Things are becoming closer. Yes. Right? So quote unquote, Definitely. globalization, mm -hmm. right? So in Jamaica, we're not just competing with other Jamaicans for labor, we're competing with the world. Mm -hmm. And in our actual construction, we're not mm -hmm. just competing with other Jamaican construction firms, we're competing with international firms. Mm -hmm. So with the e economic improvements, if we'd call it that, we are seeing a, a decrease in the unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. And um, it is becoming, I think, more and more difficult to attract mm -hmm. and maintain staffing levels at um, previous mm, compensation rates. Let's Aww. put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, especially being here in the Bank of Jamaica, there are concerns about increasing prices and um, the cost of our services contributing to inflation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think a major, major issue when we talk about labor mm -hmm. is um, productivity. Mm -hmm. How are we upskilling the workforce mm -hmm. so that from the, without having to import more and more persons, yes. we're gonna get more out of the people in Jamaica yeah. Right? And a, a big component of that is training, certification, and probably education from the, the, the basic level. I actually wonder if our secondary level and tertiary level educational institutions are preparing or, or people for the construction industry. I, w I would hazard, I guess, I, I don't think I can speak for all, but I would hazard, I guess, that employers in general, not just the construction industry, are dissatisfied mm -hmm. with the education system mm -hmm. and the quality of the, the graduates that are being um, outputted. Mm -hmm. I actually would put it the other way. I would say Jamaicans, the innate talent and skill of the Jamaican worker mm -hmm. is, what, uh, is what keeps the country afloat. Oh. The actual education system is not giving the value add that mm -hmm. it should be. Um, and even worse when we consider the rapid change in technology. But there is a, there is a, a, a silver lining, which is that yes. even with the, the issues that we have, mm -hmm. right, Jamaican, the Jamaican person, the mm -hmm. worker, mm -hmm. is in demand. That means yes. there is something about us yes. that's special. When we're good, uh -huh. we're good. Yeah. If, if the education system would catch up, mm -hmm. I think the country would skyrocket. Recently, there was a big conversation on X Twitter about how, how early can someone leaving um, university purchase a home and it was generally agreed that you can't do that at 30 
So my, my <laughs> question is, my question is, why is it so expensive or seemingly expensive to purchase real estate? Um, what are the factors that are, that are driving this high cost? You know, why is it nearly impossible for young people to buy a home? Yeah, no, it's, it's a major issue, but it's not just a Jamaican issue. It's a worldwide issue. I mm -hmm. think uh, when I check some of the statistics, um, in the U.S., over the last couple of years, I don't remember the exact amount, they, they had said that in the same period, they saw home prices increase over 40%, mm -hmm. while wages increase less than 10%. Mm -hmm. So we do have a mis mismatch Definitely. between input costs right. and yeah. income. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a hard question, hard pill to swallow. I mean, how, how do we solve that? It seems like people's income would have to increase, but that comes from... Or, or the cost of construction decrease. Exactly. Or you find, you find more <laughs> yeah. cheaper ways cheaper or ways more cost-effective right. ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This has been discussed and people have looked at all sorts of solutions to a point where they're talking, we, especially in Jamaica where we're very keen on certain kind of homes where our preference is to move into a more solid home over time, mm -hmm. block and steel, right. and concrete mm -hmm. house. Bag of cement costs what a bag of cement costs. Mm -hmm. A ton of steel at the hardware costs what a ton of steel costs. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at other options, trying to figure out how to get the, the most efficient structure to put someone in cost efficient yeah. they're limited no, I, but i see the square footage reducing <laughs> <laughs> that's it it gets you know, it's tiny it gets we try and we squeeze and but there's a limit that you can really put someone in a home especially talking about young people trying to start a family and so on there's a limit that you can squeeze somebody down to mm -hmm. i would argue the real issue is that we we should look on the while we try our best to bring costs down meaning reduce the, the, the obstacles to it more efficient mm -hmm. home delivery. We really have to also look at productivity in the country at, on a whole to increase incomes. Mm -hmm. mm. So there's two sides to the coin. You've said a lot, Richard, and I really want to know from the Incorporated Master Builders Association standpoint, what must the state do to make life easier for you so that you can do what you have to. For me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you know, but Anna, she wants to own a home tomorrow or no. three. As, as <laughs> Anna said, that's, <laughs> as Anna was saying, that's actually an important point. If, if the system, if the, whatever, the, the public system, the, the government, how they interface with, with us as local contractors, builders, developers, mm -hmm. if there's an efficiency in there that causes our cost to increase, mm -hmm that gets passed on to the private consumer. Mm. So when we talk about what the government can do, we think, you know, if we join hands as stakeholders, as a group, mm -hmm. we really have to look at how we reduce bureaucracy, mm -hmm. right? So procurement processes, mm -hmm. issues with um, interfacing with municipal councils so we can have transparency and mm -hmm. faster turnover in mm -hmm. approvals. Mm -hmm. Those things add to cost. Mm -hmm. Um, if we look at how the infrastructure is developed, the, the roads, the water, especially water, mm. the water access, sewage mm. treatment connections for, for uh, developments, mm -hmm. that has an impact also. Mm -hmm. And also um, how we develop the local construction sector mm -hmm. so that over time uh, we see our local actors becoming more efficient, mm -hmm. right, and delivering more competitively. As usual, <laughs> the time is up and us, just as Mastodon fee. <laughs> we hear the rest of what Richard has to say. It has been another riveting conversation. Thank you so much, Richard Mullings. Thank you for spending time with us, Richard. Well, it, is, it was a pleasure. Um, I really enjoyed that conversation. We did too. We have <laughs> been speaking with Richard Mullings, president of the Incorporated Master Builders Association of Jamaica. He shared his perspective on the impact of the construction industry on Jamaica's economy. Centrally speaking, we'll be right back after the break.
On today's show, we had a conversation with Richard Mullings, president of the Incorporated Master Builders Association of Jamaica, IMAJ, about the impact of the construction industry on Jamaica's economy. Here's a recap of the discussion, so let's get into the fast facts. Number one. The IMAJ promotes the construction industry to highlight the output of its members, maintains standards of excellence in the building and construction industry, inspires member firms to improve their skills to promote the development of a competent and highly motivated workforce. Number two, the IMAJ represents firms that directly participate in the construction industry, including building and engineering contractors, subcontractors, and developers. Number three, the services offered by the IMAJ are advocating for member companies and stakeholders in the industry, including participation in government policy, negotiating with trade unions regarding labor rates for the construction industry and further develop task rates, providing training via webinars, workshops, and seminars to facilitate knowledge transfer. Number four, members of the public may raise concerns to the IMAJ regarding issues pertaining to any one of its member firms. And number five, Jamaica is currently experiencing an accelerated rate of construction across the island, and a significant portion of that construction is generated from public infrastructure projects. That's it for our Fast Facts. That's our program for this week. Right, uh, I hope you enjoyed our company today and uh, Anna with Eli. Remember, she'll be back next week. She will be back. She will miss you, Sheena. She misses you guys. <laughs> well, follow us on X and Facebook at Central Bank JA, at Central Bank Jamaica on Instagram, and on BOJ's YouTube channel. You can also visit the website boj.org.jm. We also invite you to send in your questions on X or Facebook. And of course, what Central is speaking next week at the same time right here on your station where we'll have another special guest. I'm Anna. I'm Elan. Thanks for watching. Central is speaking is a production of Bank of Jamaica.